The world's best jet ski riders have arrived in Miami for round one of the toughest personal watercraft race series anywhere on the planet, the Aquacross Pro Enduro Championship. And last season, it was ferociously competitive, sometimes brutal, but always entertaining. Mikey Young takes a look back now then at where it all started in the big surf of Daytona Beach. Aquacross 2017 starts right here in Daytona Beach. lovely Daytona Beach for round number one of the P1 Aquacross series. We are off and away. I think he got his chocolate and his peanut butter. Over here, I'll send a bill to the Reva rider. Francis, still your leader. He pulls a hat trick this weekend. Three for three for the Mac attack, Chris McCluggish. Beautiful St. Pete Beach hosts round two of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Tour. Get ready to head into one turn, 80 plus mile per hour, and guess what, folks? No brakes. It's your race leader, Brian Baldwin, looking smooth out there. and that's four weekends in a row dating back to Lake Worth for the Mac Attack. Round three of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Series. Yeah, I really want to pull out a win. I believe so. Uh-oh, Ian Tosca got stuck. He's hung up in the buoy. Oh! We gotta bear down and 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 win. Ian Tosca putting Sidu on top of the box. Isla Murata, toughest weekend yet of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Tour. We are back and underway. But everything seems good, so we should be ready to win. What a race! Chris Saxon still up there in the mix. And it looked like Chris McCluggage will possibly take the win. Oh, my. But in the end, I was first. That's all that matters. The Windy City in round five of the Aquacross Pro Enduro Series. Race conditions very choppy here. Really gnarly, hard to get speed, hard to get time in. Big air! Might not take the moto, but we're gonna win the battle. Derek Francis is now running away with this one. McCluggage shot out of a cannon. Baldwin going by. Chris McCluggage there on the back straightaway. We were really strong yesterday. Felt like we were pretty much unbeatable. So the legend that is Chris McAttack McLuggage did it again, but the big question for 2018 is going to be, can he make it three from three? I don't come out to lose. I'm not as fit as I have been in the past. At the same time, I'll go out and you know use my talent. I think I still got some left. And uh, no, just go out and have fun. And you know, if I don't win, I don't have fun. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, yes, the question is, I can definitely do it again. So Max certainly is quietly confident there and that hat trick could be on for him. And there's a number of other riders around here who've maybe got some different ideas. I 
wanted a team that was going to support me as much as I support myself. And Broward had the most professional team out there, and they were the team that beat me, so they were the team to join. Now this year, all I get to focus on is get out on the water and racing. And to me, that really is a game changer, so I can focus on the number one thing, which is winning. There's only one place to go but up. I mean, we're, we're going for the number one, and uh, that, that's, that's the only goal I have. Definitely awesome to be here. We had talked about hanging it up last year, you know, after winning the world championship. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a, uh, a, uh, a bullseye on my back. And, you know, that's one thing I, I kind of pride myself in. I, you know, I don't really crack under pressure, so, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go out there and, and take the win. And the guy actually that you're going to be up against, perhaps not most of it, one of the guys mostly, Chris McLuggage, he's trying to make it three season championships. You're the world number one from Key West, but he's trying to win the championship overall. You're going to try and spoil that party, presumably. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, you know we're coming with a full head of steam, and uh, you know, our number one goal is to you know take this tour uh, away from him. I ended up second in Sarasota overall, won a moto, and definitely always top five. But um, definitely want to win an overall this year and. Uh, show what the new ski can do. The sea Dew loves the flat water and uh, like you said, Marine Stadium, Miami, close to my house. We're making history again here, so uh, really excited. This track is tighter. I feel like this new RXTX handles really well, corners and the tight turns well. So uh, I think we have a little advantage this weekend, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, for me, any one of those guys could be crowned champion in 2018, and what a season it's going to be this year. Kicking things off here in Miami at the Marine Stadium, and then we move over to the crystal clear waters of St. Pete Beach before moving over to Sarasota as part of the huge powerboat racing festival that takes place there. We're then off up north to Lake Michigan and Chicago before heading south once again and rounding out the season back down here in Florida at Fort Lauderdale. So the riders are now all busy prepping for race one of three this weekend. And those races are going to be 30 minutes plus a lap. Now that's going to be tough on both man and machine. And what about these machines? Well, let me tell you, they're 300 horsepower monsters brought to you by manufacturers such as Kawasaki, Yamaha and sea -Doo. Not quite stock either. A number of performance modifications under the hood means that they'll send you from zero to 60 in a shade under four seconds. And at the top end, you're going to be knocking on the door of 85 or even 88 miles an hour. And that, let me tell you, is fast on water. So that's the machinery. And when we come back, it'll be time for race one. See you after this. Welcome back to Miami, where we're just moments away from the opening race here in the 2018 Aquacross Pro Enduro Championship. And for some of these riders, this will be their first taste of pro racing action, having made the step up from the amateur class. Here's Mikey with the lowdown. It's good. It's good because it gives me a challenge to go for the boys. You know, some, someone's got to be out there, especially the girls, to go and beat them. Eric said I could stay an amateur, but I wanted to move to pro. You know, it's the only good thing about going into the deep end and going with the best races in the world. I learned a lot from the amateur class, but I'm ready to step up my game and go into the pros and just race with the best. Joining Sophie in the pro ranks this year is the 2017 Amateur 300 champion, Cody Tetro. We're stepping up to the pro class, so we've got uh, some strong competitors up there. So it's, it's going to be a battle, but I'm willing to put my all into it and see where we can come up. Joining Tetro and Francis, moving up into the pro class, Christian Daly, who is the Northeast Regional Champ, and Carlito Devalier, the Amateur International 300 Champion. Well, good luck to them all, and we'll be hearing from some of those guys a little bit later on to find out how they all did. Now, though, it's time for race one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in 26 years, we are racing again here at Miami Marine Stadium. Got very calm conditions, flat water out there for our pro racers today with the Miami skyline in the background. Racers will start from the east side of the course and work their way west. You can see there is a penalty buoy out in the center of the track in case anybody misses a buoy out there. The finish line in front of these big crowds here at Miami Marine Stadium. And as we take a look at the start, the green flag is up in the air. All racers being staged. Green flag drops, we are off and away. 2018, here we come. It's P1 Aquacross coming at you, Miami. 
and taking a look out. Your race leaders right now, Sorel Lamone on the inside, but he's got company. Here comes Francis and Ian Tosca from the center of the track, and those two starting to dart out from the rest of the field. As we head into turn number one, we'll take a look right here. It looks like that's Ian Tosca on the silver bullet. He's on the sea -Doo on the inside and on the outside it is the 911 as we go on board there with Eric Francis and you can see these guys are battling it out bond rail to bond rail side by side and I'll tell you what that takes a lot of trust right there to be 85 plus mile per hour side by side like that with your competitor as we take a look it looks like Francis now going to move into that lead so Yamaha moving out into into the front and Francis picking up new sponsorship this year with Broward Motorsports Eric Francis, the Eagle, looking to land right here as he hails from just up the street in West Palm Beach, Florida. Ian Tosca still in that second place, and uh, surprisingly in third is the Jet X rider from Canada. That is Jay Edworthy, boat number C-477. Going back on board uh, with your leader there, and you can see already the lead that uh, Francis has amassed from the rest of the pack, and we have got a really talented field of 32 racers out here from eight different countries around the world. Back on board with Ian Tosca, and Ian Tosca putting in a good bid here for Sea-Doo. I know Tim McKercher from Look Marketing is uh, looking on with a big smile on his face. They actually debuted that c RX-TX in Key West last year. Had a couple mechanical issues, but it looks like they've worked it out for 2018. Taking a look at the chicken man there, Jay Edworthy. And Edworthy also doing a great job for c this year, picking up some national sponsorship from c as well as uh, his friends Ryan Daly and the crew at JetX. Now going on board with world champion, that is Brian Baldwin. Baldwin not getting the best of starts out there, currently up into about that fifth place position uh, behind Sorel Lamone. Lamone on boat number 99 coming all the way from France, and it's great to have Sorel Lamone back out in the pack after a tragic accident a couple years ago in Daytona where he broke his leg. And you can see, uh, we're taking a look at that start, and uh, Sophie Francis looks like she's having a bad start here in her pro rookie debut. You can see it looks like she may have lost a lanyard as uh, we take a look at Sophie. <laughs> yeah, she did, she lost a lanyard. You can see it come out right there, and the rest of the field leaves her, and it's a tough break. Uh, what a rookie debut there, but she is uh, one fast girl. She was the only woman to win the 300 class in the 2017 amateur campaign. Take a look at uh, Chris McCluggage. McCluggage out there currently sitting uh, in that seventh place position, but he is working his way through the pack. Not the best of starts. Him, Aswar Brothers also not getting a good start. Oxa and Arrow as uh, we take a look at the field here as they get ready to come through our start finish line. Now on board with Anthony Redetic. Oh, and Anthony uh, hits a buoy. Maybe a little too much of that uh, Rippet Energy Fuel whose uh, sponsorship he picked up this year. Riffit also the official energy drink here at Aquacross for 2018. All right, nice uh, overhead shot there. Back on board with Sorel Lamone and uh, Lamone approach and looks like the yellow flags are coming out and it looks like there's a rider down. Rider down, oh, that's Carlito Devalle and I'll tell you our professional rookies having a tough go of it here with uh, Sophie Francis losing a lanyard. Now Carlito coming off of his boat and I believe he was in a little altercation there with Cody Tetro who's another rookie out there today. So the rookies having a tough go of it. Well, taking a look at uh, Sorel Lamone. Lamone right now having a huge battle with uh, Brian Baldwin. As you can see him looking over his shoulder, currently sitting in that fifth place position. Baldwin in fourth. As we take a look at our race leader, Francis, who is working his way through the lap traffic at the west end of the track. And here comes Lamone. Lamone trying to set up Baldwin. What a battle we got. Baldwin on the outside, Lamone on the inside. And Lamone advances up into that fourth place position. Great pass there by Sorel Lamone. Back on board, looking through the goggles of Brian Baldwin right now. And you can see that's Lamone right in front of Baldwin. Baldwin uh, riding for Riva Racing, their factory team. Boy, and you can see the conditions out here have really changed since the start of this race. The race course really starting to churn up. A lot of reverb coming from the mangrove trees and the beach here on the near side. As we take a look at our racers working their way into that start finish area right along the shoreline here at Miami Marine Stadium. Taking a look, even McCluggage. McCluggage having a tough day out there. Has went from seventh to third though, so he is uh, on the gas. You know that he really does not want to lose this. He is pushing hard. 
as we take a look at our race leader, 911 Eric Francis, with about a 27 second lead over second place, Ian Tosca, right now. And as we take a look through the goggles of Eric Francis, you can see just how challenging these course conditions are. And the red flag comes out, and that's going to signify the end of race number one here as we were over halfway complete. Ian Tosca being congratulated there by Anthony Redetich. And the uh, course marshal's out here giving some instruction, letting these racers know that this race has been completed. Let's take a look now at our official results. 911 Francis was up top, followed by Arminio Iantosca in second, McCluggage in third, Jay Edworthy in the fourth spot, Baldwin in fifth, and Arrow Aswar in sixth. Well, earlier on, we looked at some of the guys and girls who have stepped up from the amateurs. So I thought I'd catch up with some of them to see how they're getting on now that they're racing with the pros. It's tough. They're, they're fast. They're, they're so fast. So I give it to them for being that quick. Yeah, I had a flying start. The flag win. I went. I was up with everyone. You know, I was nose to nose with people. And um, my lanyard came straight out. I went straight into the front. Um, I had to wait, you know, and then put it in. And then by the time I went again and raced, you know, I was already dead last. So I had to fight the way up. And then halfway through the race, I just really struggled arm pump. So it's something to learn on. You know, I'm going to go and concentrate on it, ride more, so try and sort the arm pump out. Everybody told me to stay on the amateur one more year, but I don't like to be, you know, I want to be in the top. So the, the only way to be in the top is, you know, is trying and pushing it to, to the limits. It's intense because, I mean, you're bond rail to bond rail the whole time. I mean, you got it pinned to the bars and just hoping people don't cut you off. And you just it's holding your line and everyone goes, feeds into the one buoy. Definitely a big step up. The skis are a lot faster, the competition's a lot more fierce. Going from 70 to 80 plus miles an hour, I mean, it's it really pulls on you. There's a lot more torque. It's uh, definitely you need to step up your physique for sure. And when you're racing in excess of 80 miles per hour, sometimes accidents do happen. But here at Aquacross, they take safety very seriously. incredibly tough sport. Every part of your body is used. 80 miles an hour and they hit the water, it's like hitting concrete. So it's the 2018 P1 Aquacross Safety Training Day. This is the most important part of our series. I mean, you know, without the safety, without what we're doing today, we don't have a sport. Taking care of our competitors is our number one priority. Then comes the racing. We've got EMTs and paramedics. Most of them are from Cocoa Beach and Orlando Fire Departments. These guys are out there every day saving people's lives. The safety team, they look after everything uh, on the water. If it's wet, it's their responsibility. Laying the course, uh, briefing the, the racers, making sure they're all in order, checking their safety equipment. They're kitted out with full wetsuit boots. They've got helmets, whistles for communicating in radios, flags for communicating with the racers, you know, red flag to stop the race. The yellow flag caution. Blue flag for lapping. And then go onto the ski, we have a good set of Yamaha VXs. They come with rescue sled on the back, just like a giant boogie board. Uh, the back end of it will sink under weight so we can float people on, objects, anchors, all that sort of stuff. And that's how we can easily identify them against the racers. We're gonna get to you within at least 15 seconds. So, you know, our reaction and response time is really fast. We've got different people in different areas of the course. It's about different aspects of how to pick up someone from the water, how to best take someone back to the ramp, what are the best extraction points, and being able to read something that's happening, an accident before it actually happened. And that's a skill, so it's really helping these guys remember that from last year, and some of the newer guys as well, and it's teaching them that too. This is our world, this is our sport, this is our business, so we need to take care of it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, besides pro racing, we had amateur racing out here this weekend as well. So many amateur racers that we had to start them in two heats of 23, 46 total amateurs.
it certainly has been an action-packed day here in Miami. The pro sprint guys have also been out on the water doing their thing. Take a look at this. Well, we have three separate classes here in our sprint division. This is our pro ski class. That is our sport class. And of course, we have our junior ski class. Our big winners this weekend would include Broward Motorsports' Sam Nemi. Hayden Skellett was also a big winner in the junior class. As the celebration continues down at the podium, that's going to do it here from Miami Marine Stadium. Unfortunately, there was some wildlife spotted on the course, and due to time constrictions, we will not be able to race again today. So a fantastic start for the season there, and Eric Francis opens up his points account for the year. We got an awesome hole shot. We had to battle with Arminio for the, what, first two turns but it inches apart from us. But, uh, yeah, we ended up with a good pace and a, a good win. You know, had a really good start there, me and Francis. It was close. I really want to get that hole shot. I knew with so many riders out there, key was a good start because it's going to get really rough, really fast, and to go through the pack, there's not a much enough time, you know. So I'm happy and pleased with, you know, second right now and uh, look forward to building from that. So that's it, our opening weekend of aquacross racing has come to an end, but I tell you what, what a season opener it was here from the iconic Miami Marine Stadium. Huge congratulations to Eric Francis as well for taking the win, but there was a whole load of other usual suspects who were chasing him down, and I bet next time we go racing, well, they're gonna be trying just as hard. Until then, from all of us here, see ya.